Hi everyone, Jamie Vaughn for CCM and I am here with Josh Baldwin. He has just released a new EP called Live at Church. Hi Josh, how are you today? Hey, I'm doing good. So good to be here. Good. How are you surviving um, this crazy time in our world right now? I'm, I'm doing better than I thought I was going to be doing two months ago. It's, yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm doing good. We're, we're having some, some good family time that mm -hmm. was much needed. And so, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's, I think the more people I talk to, the more that fills the case. Like, you know, this was like, it just kind of like stopped everything at first. We're like, what are we going to do? And then two months later, you're like, I, this, this time with our family has been so valuable. And, you know, we didn't know that we needed to just slow down and yeah. So yeah. last week you released your new EP it has seven songs on it. It's called live at church. You even have a previously unreleased song on here called my King forever. I'd yeah. love to hear the inspiration behind that song and what, why you chose certain songs to be on the EP. Yeah. Well, um, I, my King forever, I actually wrote that song in the fall. I was on tour with Zach Williams. Okay. We, um, we stopped in no, uh, Northfield, Massachusetts, which, is uh, where Dwight L. Moody, the famous evangelist speaker, was. he's buried there and it hit his, I think actually where we played that night was like the building that they built for him to, to preach in when he was doing the revival services years ago. All things that I kind of knew about, but then I told my father, my father's a pastor and he was like, oh, where you, do you know where you're, you are? And he was just telling me, I was like, I did not know all that. But um, that day I remember, um, uh, me and a buddy of mine, Ethan, we went into one of the dorm rooms there and uh, we had like the whole day to just kill. And so we were just like, let's try, let's write a song. And um, I was like, I just want to like write this simple worship song that feels kind of like a love song to, to Jesus, like our King, like all I want, you know, embody like all that he's done for us. And then out of that, all that I have left to give is just my love for it. And, um, and I and it, and pretty much all of it came just that day. We wrote it that day, and uh, it felt special. And I think I I love that when I think of that song, when I lead that song. Um, besides just the song itself that means so much to me, I think I remember like where that day that spending that day visiting like the grave of D. L. Moody, and then and you know going through the school there and seeing all that the Lord did through His life and and through that school where we were and um. Yeah, I love I love times like that. There's it's not often that you get to write a song that like takes you right back to right. where you were when you wrote it. And um to that feel that it feels really special because of that. And what about the other songs that are on the album? Yeah. The other one so the other ones are um are from a previous album that I released three years ago. Three years ago, yes. Wow. Um called The War Is Over. And um and, and these are songs that I have I mean, we lead them at our church here all the time. Um, and I've, I've been playing them for two and three years and some of them, like I have a couple, there's a chorus to one of the songs that I wrote 10 years ago and then didn't do anything with it really until that out this album. And, um, I had just been sitting on these live recordings for a couple years and, uh, well, most of them a couple years, a couple of them just a year ago. And, um, I finally, we were just like, I was like, can I have this new song here that we've done live and I love it can we somehow like just grab these other recordings and like do something with this? Because um, I just, that feels the most, that feels like my most natural expression of who I am. It's leading worship. And, um, and some of these songs, I just wanted to get the, these live versions out and be like, this is, this, this is the most natural way I want to like present these songs is. And so, um, so yeah, that's kind of how it happened. It just was like this quick thing that, we started before all the, you know, quarantine and all that. And then once we saw like when we were going to release it and it just happened to fall during all this, um, the songs even meant even more to me and just the whole project meant more obviously because of what's going on. Well, it does sound seamless. Like it was all recorded together at one point. Yep. So I'm it, impressed with that. That's all. A few of them were, so a few, yeah, there's a few in there that, that came behind each other, but mm -hmm. there's, uh, yeah, three of them were like recorded three years ago and then another two were recorded two years ago. And then obviously the new one was recorded just a few months ago. So um, okay. I know I was so happy with it. I think the fact that they were all with the same guys and all at our church in just the same environment really, really helped with all that. Feels 
Well, listening to your music as a whole, I can feel your heart being put down on paper. Do you have a specific songwriting um, um, ritual or a songwriting process that you go through? Um, yes and no. Like, <laughs> I think, um, I feel like that's, that seems like the answer always. Like, people are like, do you have like a formula? Like, what are you doing? I'm like, ah, my only consistent thing is that I kind of never know how it's going to happen. Like, <laughs> um, I, I, I do and I don't, I think I'm just always trying to stay ready. Like those times I just, I'll get ideas during worship or, and I'll, you know, in the middle of worship, pull my phone out and sing something in, in my voice memo and, and then maybe go back later. And then, uh, but then there's other times when just like my King forever, it was, I had nothing, I had no idea uh, of any kind of writing a song like that until that moment. And just my surround, I get very inspired by where I am. Um, but I think, I think the key thing for me is just to stay ready, stay ready to just pick up on anything. I think sometimes I used to write songs. I used to wait until I felt inspired mm -hmm. to just write. And then, um, I realized I wasn't writing that many songs and I wasn't writing that many songs that I loved. <laughs> and, and I think I've, I've learned to like, to be disciplined and as I'm disciplined in it, in, in a daily basis or a weekly basis then the inspiration comes and as i'm ready as i look around and 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 just kind of expect myself to get inspired i'm i'm even more inspired by the lord so um it, it, it's different ways some of it's from reading scripture reading story i love writing stories or writing songs that um have to do with with uh with characters in the bible and, and stuff like that and then kind of how can i shape them into like this worship song that i want to give out so do you have a favorite song or lyric that you've ever written? Oh, wow. Um, I have like, it's so fun. It's like, do you have a favorite child? That's what that feels like. Um, <laughs> uh, usually everyone says to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to pick a favorite song. Um, I, uh, I mean, right now, I, I would say my favorite like worship song that I sing that I've written, it was probably You Deserve It All. Um, and it, it's on the new album. And um, I think just the way that chorus came and it feels like the most natural like worship song to me that I've written. Um, uh, other than that, I, um, I'm, yeah, Stand In Your Love is really special for, for a lot of reasons. And um, I think uh, but there, there's a song, I'll, I'll yes, I'm gonna give you like five songs. That are <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> no, I mean, there, there's one song that's really special to me that I've written um, with a buddy of mine, and it's called Abraham. And uh, it was on the War is Over album. And it's, it started out as a song about Abraham in the Bible. And then when I, it just kind of from his perspective, and then when I wrote it and, and I started like listening back to it, it felt more, I would listen. I'm like, this is like my life. This feels like my, I remember playing it for my father and my, 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 uh, my father-in-law. And they were both like, this feels like my life. And it just like turned into this song that I realized I was writing a song about Abraham, but I realized like as the father of our nation, as a father of our faith, like he went through the things that, that we all face, you know, this, the, the, the doubt and the fear and the, been, the promises that we feel like we've been given from the Lord and maybe they're not coming true yet. And, and you know, so that, that one probably is the most special to me. And um, yeah. And is there a song that you didn't write that you wish you had? Of? Oh gosh, there's like 20 songs that I didn't write that I wish I had. I'd love to hear. <laughs> uh, um, I uh, let me see. I, there's a. Um, I was trying to think of the, some of the songs that I've been just singing. I mean, that I know you know that you have like favorite songs that you're just listening to all the time, and then those those pass, and you get your new your new crop. So I um. I've always loved that that song, the song "So Lie," um, mm -hmm. helps all unite. That song is a special, special song. Um, and uh, man, is there another? There was one the other day I was listening to, and I thought, "Wow, what a perfect song!" Um, and now I can't remember what it is. But the, but yeah, there's so many to choose from. "Build My Life." as a worship song for me is, is, is really special. And I, it's one of the songs I don't, I really never get tired of mm -hmm. and I'll never get tired of singing that song. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you have a message of hope for our viewers during this time yeah. of crisis? Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I think I do. I, I think I, 
this this whole time I was th- I, I I was talking to my wife about this um, the other day is you know when we all when we came into this whole thing I felt you I, I know for me I felt this overwhelming like what's what is happening what's going to happen next and this I mean fear obviously is just it just is the perfect scenario for fear to creep in mm-hmm. and um, and I feel like through that though and and the, and the, also the fear of like well we're not going to church and how are we going to connect with people and this. And um, I feel like through all this, in this crazy way, the Lord has like turned it around and he's given us get time with our families. I know I've been home with my family for more than I, more in the last two months than I have in five years. And just, and just from traveling, you don't realize like how much you're just saying yes to things and it's, and it's all, and it's, and it's not bad and it's all, you know, great, great opportunities. And, but then when this happens and it just stops you you realize like how, how fast you've been moving and how you've been running the race and you almost didn't have time to just sit back and see what the things that are the most, most important in your life. And that's what this time has given us. And, um, and I think on top of that, it's given us, I think this, this connection between people that maybe we didn't think we were going to have. And I felt like, I know for me, I thought, you know, we're not going to see people. We're not going to be connecting with people, connecting with our church. And in this weird way, I feel more connected in a lot of ways with friends, with family, with our church and, and, um, and just doing a lot of things like this that, that I don't normally do I'm so many zoom calls. And, but, but I think the Lord's used all that to like actually bring us together more. And there's, um, there's a peace that I think has come from, I know for me in the last two months, this piece that has just, as I slow down, I've, I've take walks every day more than I ever have in my life. I feel like my father just, you know, he's like a 63 year old man taking walks every day. But I like, I do that and I've slowed myself down and it's like, I've, I feel I've spent more time with the Lord. I spent more time with my family and all that does is just bring me peace and obviously hope. And, um, and I, so I think, yeah, I think the hope that you can find in this season is, in the in the slowing down, just make sure that let, let's get our eyes off of ourselves, off of our situation. And the more we put our eyes on Him, the more we put our eyes on Jesus. He is that hope. He is He's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And and that's going to shine through, and that's going to bring that peace that we need. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for spending time talking to us here at CCM today. And best of luck on this new album. And everybody, please go download it. Buy it from your local Christian bookstore. Wherever you can get it, get it. It's a great, great um, project of music. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.